Hey, what is you hikers? I'm Dries. I'm Jente. Welcome to Dalburg, which was never destroyed by war. Very impressive. Let's check it out. Welcome to the castle of Dalberg, also known as Dalburg. For centuries, it was a center of power for the lords of Dalberg. Located on top of the hill, it overlooks the town and valley below. In the 11th century, the Dalberg domain was part of the Diocese of Speyer. The bishop and fifth Godebold of Weierbach as the first lord of Dalberg. It was his son who began the construction of the castle around the middle of the 12th century. A descendant of the same family still owns the castle today, 29 generations later. The field outside of the castle walls used to house farm buildings and stables. These days, it's the home of the annual castle festival. As you may have noticed, there are two huge pillars in the moat. No, these did not serve as supports for a bridge, as you might suspect. Instead, they were supports for a water pipe, which let spring water into the cistern in the castle. In case of a siege, it is of course easy for an attacker to cut off this water supply. A drawing of the castle Dalburg dated to the 17th century shows that this pipe was no longer in use. At the outer castle gate, our view of the southern wall is obstructed by scaffolding. We can't really complain, actually, as the renovations these past years have done wonders for the castle. From here you can, however, still see the clear division in the castle. The higher part on the left is the oldest, dating from the 12th until the 14th century, while those on the right were built from the 14th to the 18th century. This path leading up to the inner gate is known as a Zwinge in German. In this small space, attackers would be at the mercy of a defender's projectiles, hailing down on them from above. The inner castle gate is located on a right angle to the path, making it impossible to use a long battering ram here. Immediately to our right, after stepping inside the main castle, we enter what is called the Great Hall. The main castle courtyard used to house several large buildings, including the Great Hall to the right. The now disappeared building on our left was known as the Dieter Bau and was built in the 14th century. It was built by Dieter, Chamberlain of Worms and the new lord of the castle. The tower in the back was built by his son. Let's take a closer look.
Around the first half of the 14th century, the castle was known as a Ganebenburg. We have discussed these typically German castles in earlier videos. Effectively, it meant that multiple branches of the family all lived together in the same castle. Buildings were assigned to each branch, while keeping some areas as common property, such as the gates. In Dalburg, the Dieterbau and the Great Hall were two such separate buildings, while the chapel, for example, was common ground. The large hole in the courtyard is what is left of the cistern. The castle had no natural wells, so this cistern needed to be filled with water from elsewhere, for example from the water pipe we discussed earlier. The wall column connecting the Great Hall and the Dieter Bau shows the original height of the building. The actual chapel was located at the first floor level and was entered by an external staircase and through the arched door in the north wall. In the east wall, in front of the lancet window, the altar can be seen protruding from the wall and to the left of the window, the tabernacle. In the south wall, a late Gothic pointed arch window with quote unquote window sills has been preserved. The chapel is bordered by the chapel tower. Let's lean in for a close-up. These drone shots by our friend Orca FPV finally give us a better view of the south facade of the castle. It is adorned with beautiful decorative corbeling. The drone flies over the main entrance and drops us neatly at the access ramp to the oldest part of the castle. This part of the castle dates from the 12th to the 14th century. The building we're admiring right now is known as the Palace of the Castle. It was a multi-story building and served as the main residential and representative building of the Dalbeck dynasty. Dendrochronological research indicates it was built in the early 14th century. We can see that it used to be equipped with a fireplace, which was a special luxury at the time. The keep or Bergfried right next to it is only at around one third of its original height. There is no entrance to be seen as it was located higher up. The small path between the palace and the keep leads us downhill to another residential building. Researchers concluded that the fireplace here might have equipped a kitchen. Evidenced by the joint between the two buildings, we can assume it was added to the palace at a later date. 
Unfortunately, it's a bit overgrown at the time of filming to see all these details. We mentioned earlier that Dalburg was a Ganebenburg. Because of this, it was continuously rebuilt and extended during the 14th, 15th and 16th centuries. As the family grew, so did the castle to house them. The many alterations are easily recognized when looking at bricked up door and window openings. Passages and areas continually changed as new rooms sprang up like mushrooms. For example, the free space between the Dieterbau and the Great Hall was eventually built on. The ground floor would remain an open passageway, however, so that everyone could freely access the chapel. The Great Hall used to be only one story high until the 17th century when it was significantly remodeled. In the age of gunpowder, thick walls were no longer important in castle construction and large window openings could by then also be closed by glass windows. In the 16th century, Johann von Dalberg had a new castle built in Walhausen, the next town over. A century later, this new, more modern castle was rebuilt and extended by his descendants, who now favored more luxury as well as living in the valley instead of high upon the hilltop. This meant that Dalburg was gradually abandoned as the administrative seat moved to the new castle. The last wooden structures were removed at the end of the 18th century and were, for example, reused in the former boys' school in Walhausen. A little later still, during the French occupation, Dalburg was marked for demolition. Many buildings in the surrounding villages were built with these Dalburg stones. Some of them are now making their way back to Dalburg, when during the recent constructions several carloads of stones were saved from demolished house in Dalburg and reused. Rendered a ruin, the castle fell into a deep sleep. It is only in the past few decades that the castle has been reawakened by the founding of the so-called Friends of Dalburg. Since 1985, they have been blowing new life into the castle. Due to the danger of collapse in certain areas, large restoration works have been undertaken in recent years to make it accessible again for the public.
that was Dalburg. Time for the arbitrary subjective castle score. I think it's gonna be a 10. What do you think? I also think it's a 10. It's a unanimous 10, and why? Well, because first off, it's really big. You can see a lot, you can enter freely, and there are some beautiful decorations. Leave your own score in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. And like, comment, subscribe, and all the good YouTube stuff if you want to see more of these kind of castles. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.